Hey everyone, my name is Phil Garrity. I'm a principal group product manager at Microsoft, and I'm happy to be here today to talk about my PM journey. Uh, and maybe if for those of you out there who haven't had a traditional PM path, uh, this will resonate with you. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there is a traditional PM path anymore, but I wanted to uh, spend some time talking about mine, and then if it inspires somebody else, uh, that would be great. Um, so let me go ahead and get started uh, and take you through uh, some things that have happened uh, in my career and some lessons learned along the way. All right, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of uh, talk about this guy, Satya Nadella, who's the CEO of Microsoft. Um, and uh, yeah, specifically here, he's talking about Windows 365, which is a product that I currently work on um, and have been on the team for the last couple of years. Uh, we um, are super excited that we've launched this product back in August, um, and it's uh, it's a it's been an incredible journey to be part of this team to build not only the product but the team itself during the pandemic. Um, and it's uh, you know the biggest product that I've ever personally worked on the most. Uh, impactful product, the, the sort of largest uh, addressable market with it. Uh, and for many reasons, it's just an extremely exciting product to work on. Uh, but I also wanted to, you know, um, talk about um, a little bit about what it is, but then also compare it and contrast it with like some of the other things that I've worked on in my career. Uh, so in a nutshell, what it is, is we've brought Windows uh, itself, the operating system, into the cloud uh, for the first time you can log into windows from any device anywhere in the world uh, and it's always yours it's always uh, the 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 way that you left it um, it's a personal cloud pc in the cloud and there's a lot more that i could say about it uh, but um, i'll stop there for now uh, and say that building this service uh, was an extraordinary effort uh, literally, there are people all over the world working on this at Microsoft, um, and it's a privilege to be able to work on it. Not all products have as much, much um, sort of fanfare with them and uh, the end user experiences that uh, this particular product does. And I've worked on some that, that, that weren't like that. In fact, the product that I worked on just before this was called Partner Center. Um, and although Partner Center is a much less well-known product, uh, it is incredibly important to Microsoft. So during Partner Center, uh, I was able to work in a few different areas. I worked there for four years, and uh, we built out uh, a set of tools and capabilities for Microsoft's partner channel of almost 50,000 partners to transact with Microsoft for all of the cloud services, including Office, Azure, and everything we sell um, through this uh, portal and a set of APIs and an SDK that, that backs it up. So my team worked on the analytics that uh, partners are able to see about what's happening with the customers they're serving, uh, their membership in the Microsoft Partner Network itself, and the partner accounts inside of the portal. And what's important isn't to remember like all the details here. It's just that two things, uh, this product and the other product, Windows 365 that I showed you are incredibly different. This product has a much smaller audience. It's a, it's a pure B2B type of a product. And it, uh, in some sense, it has less polish and flair than Windows 365, but it can be just as important um, in terms of driving revenue and driving business opportunity for your company. Uh, and I learned a ton on this product, uh, just like I've learned a ton on Windows 365. So uh, many of the things that I've learned on Partner Center, I still carry with me today on Windows 365. And some of the things that I learned, um, you know, uh, uh, along the way didn't translate. Um, uh, and one in particular was that the end user experiences have been quite different um, for Windows 365, and we just had to adapt the product for a much larger audience. Uh, so I wanted to give you a little bit of 
uh, all of that up front because that's what I do for work and it's um, kind of what has shaped some of the products that I've the, that I've worked on and, and and the way that I think about the discipline. But this talk is about how uh, how to get into product. And so let me back all the way up to the beginning of when I started out as a product manager. Actually, even before that. So this is 12 year old Phil working on a uh, PC there on the left that uh, that I wanted to uh, put together so that I could play games with my friends. Uh, we used to um, drag these these huge desktop PCs around with us when we'd have you know play dates and bring it over to my friend's house, throw it in the back of my mom's car along with that CRT monitor. And we'd hook them up and have LAN parties and play things like TIE Fighter, which you're seeing here. I thought it was the coolest game I'd ever seen. DOS-based game, you install it with a bunch of you know, floppy disks that you're pulling in and out of the, the machine. But once you get that thing loaded, it is so much fun. And it was well worth uh, all the hours it took to figure out how to build a computer. Uh, and I loved it. I loved every aspect of it. I even loved DOS. Lots of people think that's, you know, a you know, horrible sort of black screen with the blinking cursor and all that. And I just thought it was beautiful uh, for some reason. I thought it was just fantastic how uh, you could manipulate a computer just by typing a few few uh, words in. Um, and I really started a love affair with computers, um, you know, very early on. But uh, something happened. Uh, life intervened, and I thought for a minute that uh, that I should go to medical school, um, and I should be something different. I should be in healthcare, and so uh, so I, I I went down that path. I was pre med, and I um, started out my career path thinking that I was going to go into medicine. Uh, but it you know I I realized over the course of time that that wasn't the right way for me to go. And so um, I went from gamer to failed doctor to uh, business. Uh, it turns out, you know, business has happy to take failed doctors. Um, and I went into consulting. And then I parlayed those skills into a job at Microsoft after I'd kind of realized that consulting has a whole bunch of great skills that you build. Um, but I actually wanted to build things. And I wanted to, um, basically be involved in the, in, in um, owning things and driving things forward and um, having, having something that I could call my own. Um, so I left consulting and went to take a business job at Microsoft. Uh, and I, this was around 2009 and then I uh, had my first business job at Microsoft and I worked in an area called um, licensing and pricing, which later became business planning at Microsoft. And there, you know, you learn about um, all of the different SKUs, um, how they're packaged and priced and um, basically monetized for the company. And I worked on Office 365 and um, I learned about specifically uh, about our channels, um, the way that we sell it through the website and uh, through through partners um, and um, and direct to large enterprise customers through a huge agreement called the enterprise agreement and 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 what all that taught me was um, that uh, well it was it was a lot about how enterprises make money um, the genius of the enterprise agreement um, but I really focused in on the partner side of things and um, I got the opportunity to design a new way of selling cloud services. To, uh, to Microsoft's partners, to and through Microsoft's partners um, as a reseller model, which didn't exist prior to this at Microsoft. And um, that started kind of my journey um, uh, into, into an, uh, the next opportunity. So the next opportunity that I had was in product. Um, and I, uh, I was able to start out by building channels, uh, partner channels for Microsoft, and eventually move into a product role uh, at Microsoft where I built the, the, um, the partner center experiences that I showed you earlier. And uh, that sort of stepwise um, progression from 
business planning into uh, something that was, you know, kind of had a business element of it in a program called the Cloud Solution Provider Program at Microsoft, but then also had a platform that underlied it. That, uh, because I was involved in the design of all that and worked very closely with a bunch of product managers on it, they trusted me. They knew me and they knew that I was somebody willing to take a bet on later on when it was time to build the platform for cloud solution provider program uh, that we call Partner Center. So all those things were connected, all those experiences I was having were, were eventually connected. I couldn't see them while I was going through them, but they ended up being connected and they ended up being a really important um, part of my, my entry into product. Um, and so I'm spending a little bit more time talking about that since that's what this talk is about. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, it, 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 it just became really apparent to me that, um, you know, being intentional about the steps you're taking toward the career you want uh, is really important. You may not be able to get there in one step. It may make, it may make more sense to take multiple steps to get there. Uh, and leverage your strengths while you're on that journey, lean into them, uh, and you'll start to you'll start to unlock the path. Um, so that's what happened to me. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I learned in that last phase. So as I was coming in to product, I didn't really know what it was. I was, uh, I was, I just thought it was engineering and I, I was afraid that maybe I was missing something, that maybe um, that the, the discipline itself was gonna be you know, too much for me, um, that I was gonna fail at it, that it was, you know, it was only for really smart people at Microsoft and for some reason uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't in that group. And, um, and so I had a lot of fear going in, but I was also, I felt like, hey, worst case, at least I'll find out that this isn't the right thing for me. Um, I didn't know anything about user experience. I didn't, I mean, I knew things about technology, but I didn't think I knew enough. I knew a lot of smart people at Microsoft who seemed like they knew more than I would ever know about technology. I did know a lot about business though. Um, and I did know how to tell stories. I knew uh, how to um, uh, use data and, um, and, and convince people of things. And so there were skills that I had, I could write and I could speak. Uh, there were skills that I had that were, were very useful um, in the discipline uh, and, and were in fact um, skills that not everyone that I was working with had. So I began to be able to see that I could really lean on that business um, acumen while I was learning the other areas. And the first other area I learned was the technical area the last one was the user experience. And um, they just began to build on each other and reinforce each other. And while I was uh, absorbing, you know, from the people around me, the things that I didn't, that I wasn't as strong in, uh, I was really continuing to lean on that business acumen to help me add value to the people around me and to the business that I was, that I was working in. Because all three of these areas are are important and you'll find that some people are more uh, uh, strong in one area or another. So search out the people that, uh, that you can kind of buddy up with and, um, and, and learn from and also uh, sometimes work with on projects that will complement your skills. So here's some examples of uh, uh, how many of us at Microsoft think about uh, product. Um, I don't think this is unique to Microsoft. Um, this came from a, um, a document that um, is used internally um, to talk about what is the role of a product manager uh, in the company. And, um, you know, I've spent enough time outside of the company talking to other PMs to know that these things are pretty common uh, in any product role that you have. And what I've done is I've highlighted in green the things that for me, I was really leaning on that business background to, uh, to at first, 
to, to kind of carry me through some of the other things that I was learning about that required, um, you know, the technology background a little bit more that required some experience in the process of actually going through and building out a product and, um, and, and the user experience elements that, that, that we talked about. So, um, the yellow ones on this list, uh, things like prioritization and how you set metrics, um, developing a, um, like a roadmap of the features that you're going to build and actually going and building them. You know, those things took a while for me to, to pick up on and to figure out how to do. Um, and um, it's, still, it's still a work in progress, to be honest, on all of these things. That's what I love about this discipline. I'm, you're never done. Um, you're always just getting better and sharpening your tools. Uh, and so um, today I'm stronger in some of these areas, certainly than when I started. Um, and today I, I lead a team of people um, that is, um, is building skills across all of these areas. Uh, but um, everybody comes in with a different background and a different skill set. Some people are just blank slate, right out of college. They don't have uh, any of these things. Um, and for those we're looking for, you know, just the aptitude to be able to take these on. And I'll talk about that in, a, in, a, in another minute. Um, but as you start to build the skills over time in the discipline, you're looking to build out strength in these areas. Um, fundamentally, your job as a product manager is to drive growth through the product, um, drive growth of your, of your business and your company through the product. So it's your job to understand how do we do that? How do we make sure that we are building the right product with the right vision and strategy or measuring things appropriately, uh, that we have a, a, a long-term development plan that's being well executed, and then when we get, get it into the market that people buy it, that they understand what it is, and that they become fans and evangelists of our product. And then finally, you have to monitor it at the end and you have to know if this is the right product, um, you've made the right decisions, you have the right features, and if not, you, you pivot. So um, that process is universal and um, it's really important that, that we in our discipline are strong at all aspects of this. Um, so, uh, there's some lessons learned that I wanted to share with all of you uh, for just sort of how um, I've thought about a product um, uh, coming into this career and, and, and what are some of the things that I've taken away from it, um, kind of looking back across you know, the arc of uh, really my life um, more than even just my career. So the first thing is follow your passions. Um, I can't stress that enough. Uh, you, you know, um, if I had known that when I was 12, I probably would have gone to um, get a degree in computer science. Um, I probably would have skipped the whole medicine thing, you know, and I might have missed out on some things along the way that actually taught me a lot of other stuff. Um, so I'm not sad that that happened, but in the end, following your passions is what brought me back to the right thing to be to be focused on, got me into technology. Um, and ironically, today, working on Windows 365, I'm building computers again. They just happen to be uh, up in the cloud this time. Uh, leveraging your superpowers is really important, as we talked about. Um, you're going to learn what those are as you progress through your career. In my case, they were communication, and they were, uh, you know, ability to tell stories and to uh, um, you know, use data to create compelling arguments. Uh, these things allowed me to essentially contribute back to the success of the products and the organization that I was part of and bought me time to learn the other things that I needed to learn to become a stronger product manager and eventually to become a leader that could then uh, help other people on that same journey. Don't take too many steps um, all at once. So this is important. You don't want to try and, at least in my experience, um, change lots of things at the same time. Um, that makes job changes just really difficult. Um, and it can make 
Uh, the same is true in products as well. You don't want to change too many features at the same same time because you can't tell um, what it is that uh, you might have done wrong. Um, you you know, um, in your career, if you change employers, disciplines, uh, and you go from an individual contributor to a manager all at the same time, I mean, you know, good luck to you if you can do that. But for me, that's too much change. Um, and so I needed to do it. Uh, a little bit more of a crawl, walk, run, um, and it takes longer, but that patience pays off because uh, you do develop really strong skills along the way, uh, and 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 that diligence does pay off in the end. Relationships, I can't stress this enough. Getting the job that you're going to get, the first job you're going to get, uh, requires that somebody bets on you. You've got to have a relationship for that. You know, as a hiring manager. Uh, I might get 400 resumes for a job that we open and we'll interview five or six people. Uh, you, you've got to be in someone's network in order to even get into that interview uh, stage. It's usually somebody who knows you or somebody uh, in your sort of extended network that's um, kind of getting through those filters. And that's just the reality of the world. You know, most industries are like that. Most hiring managers make decisions like that. It's how things um, happen. And uh, it's um, equally true once you get into the organization that the relationships you have will dictate the partnerships that you're building. They'll dictate uh, your own growth and career trajectory, uh, you know, how tightly kind of aligned with your boss you are. So pick the team carefully, pick your partners and your and your and the people you're collaborating with carefully. Um, you know, these relationships are going to be the key to it all. It's actually not about the technology. It's not about the software. It's not about um, what we think it's about. It's about the people. Um, if it was just about the other stuff, we just get robots to write software. The last thing I want to talk about is uh, these three things here, um, curiosity, grit, and empathy. I have not figured out a way to teach people this stuff. It is hard to teach this, but it is much easier to teach all of the stuff on the previous slide uh, related to the product journey. So regardless of where you come in, in your own professional background, there's a path for you in product. If you're coming in right out of college or with some experience, there's a path for you in product. Uh, but you really do need to have these three characteristics. Um, curiosity is critically important because you've got to stay interested. So if certain things are uninteresting to you, please don't become a product manager in those things. Um, You've got to you've got to stay focused uh, and to you know and, and be in it for the long haul and and that's going to require that um, that you're willing to also get up off the mat if uh, if if you know you get knocked down grit means you get back up Angela Duckworth uh, wrote a great book about this um, I encourage you to check it out if you're interested in in learning more about it um, but grit is resilience um, when things you know, aren't going the way you want, and it's coming back and keeping at it until you get it right. And the last thing is empathy, which is maybe the most important of all of these. It's the ability to understand other people and see things through their eyes, uh, to treat them with dignity. And it is incredibly important to do that as a product manager with our customers, with our internal relationships that we have, uh, uh, both with developers and other partner teams you're going to work with, you're at the center of so many different teams that are relying on you to build the most important asset that the company has um, in, in terms of the, the IP. So um, you, you, you have to have empathy to get this right. Uh, so those are my tips, lessons learned. Um, I'm Phil Garrity, and I hope that you've enjoyed this talk. Um, you know, uh, I, I have a wife and two um, wonderful kids. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I do, um, I do for them. 
uh, and I do for the people that I work with. Um, and I think that the journey that we're all on is the beautiful, the beautiful part of all of this. So I really like my, my Angelo's quote there. Um, but if you have other questions uh, and you want to follow up with me, please do on LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, my info is right there. Um, otherwise, I'll just say thank you very much. It's been an honor to speak with you. And I hope you have uh, a great rest of your day.